Hey guys, Stan Sullivan. It is hot today. Uh, so we got Steve out of here. For those of you that don't know, Steve was a ginormous maple tree that was about five feet off of our house. I might be a little exaggerating. It might have been like seven feet. So he's out of here and our guy just came back and ground the stump yesterday. And so now we're left with this mound of wood chips. So I've already been spreading them right here. So just to show you how deep and mucky this was. You can see how far down I uh, sink in right there. And that is just a little bit of what this yard has looked like all summer long. If it wasn't for the grass, it would all look like that. And then this was always a low spot here, so I think a couple of wheelbarrows are due. Now, we are doing all of this for a reason. Because underneath all of these wood chips is a load of hard pan that was supposed to be part of a pad for a brand new workshop and you can't put a foundation for a shed a workshop or anything for that matter on top of a bunch of organic matter so i want to get the bulk of these wood chips out of here now that way i can move them to wherever it is on the yard that i need them to be because i'm not going to be able to get the excavator to those areas without doing more damage to an already soft yard once I get most of these out of the way, when the excavator gets here, I'll be able to move what's left and get down to the level of where the hard pan was. Speaking of hard pan, you may have a question, what exactly is that? I'm not exactly sure what the composition of it is, but I do know that it works well for foundations of not just workshops, sheds, houses, also driveways because it compacts down and it actually over a few years becomes like rock in fact when you get it delivered you have these big boulders that fall out of the back of the truck and you think they're rock but they're not it's just hard pan that's been compacted so well that they actually look feel and act like a boulder all right so i'm having some problems in this chain link out of here because this tree has grown to encompass the chain link so I'm gonna have to get some bolt cutters and cut this out the same thing has happened over here right here and right there all right so why I was babbling on about hard pan more work outside of the wood chips actually needs to be done in order to prep this site to receive the pad for my new workshop. That is a wordy explanation I know for me to just say I gotta remove this chain link fence because there are a couple of tree stumps here that I need to get out because I'm actually going to cut a swale on the side of my new workshop pad in order to aid drainage.
This is one of the aspects of building a shed, or in my case, slash workshop, that most people do not cover. And let's face it, there's a pretty good reason for that. It's because it's boring. Most people just want to see someone build some walls and stick them up. Check out any video series about building a shed and see which aspect of that build has the most views. Most likely has something to do with the framing. But if you want those walls to last, and I mean truly last, you have to start the preparation even before you start thinking about the foundation. I know, I know, it's all <laughs> type of stuff, but it truly does all start with site prep. In fact, I believe this one step is so integral that the lack of it is the number one reason you see so many sheds leaning, sloping, sagging in people's backyards under their own weight. So in my case, I have a very specific set of circumstances that I need to overcome when I'm thinking about designing what type of foundation I'm going to use because our property has a certain set of characteristics to it. So in my case, our water table comes pretty close to the surface during the raining season and then recedes during the dry months. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that it's just a few inches, maybe a foot at most below the surface. That's not really a problem if you're looking to put in a brand new well, but if you want to build a building, you have to take that into consideration. Why, you ask? Three words, hydrostatic uplift forces. I know, I know. All over again. But hear me out. Essentially, the water comes up from below the foundation and then pushes on that foundation, acting like a hydraulic. Then in the dry season, it recedes. Next wet season rolls around, comes back up, more uplift forces. Doesn't cause a problem the first season, second season, maybe even the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, you name it. But over time, that repeated pressure can weaken the whole structure. Now, there's a couple of different ways that I know of that you can kind of engineer your way around that. What I am going to do is something that is done quite often here in Florida, and that is to raise the grade of my build site so that the bottom of my foundation, in this case my footers, is going to sit above my natural soil level. And yes, I know if you have to pull a permit and you have to be inspected on this, doing that does mean that you're going to have to have a compaction test. But it is a small price to pay to make sure that the building that you put up is going to continue standing years down the road. So I've never actually laid out a pad with an excavator before. Obviously, if you watched, I believe it was last week's video, my first time operating an excavator, specifically a mini excavator. Well, this would be like day three, I think, of my operating experience but i have done pads with skid steers before and i've been able to lay those out in probably i i don't know maybe an hour and a half i guess to lay out a pad this size but with the excavator i was operating this it was a full day from about eight in the morning until six or seven at night i was at the sticks of this thing not all of that was doing the pad i was also doing some driveway work but i think just doing the pad was five hours all by itself. So that was considerably longer than what it took me to do one of these using a skid steer. And just for the record, I was, I know this has a blade on the front of it, but I never was really able to figure that thing out. <laughs> Ah, it's pretty rough. I just gave up at some point. Now, from what I understand, and, and please leave in the comments down below if you know how to do this, but from what I understand, the blade on one of these machines actually has a float function where you can lay it down on the surface, and then as you move the machine back, it will just sort of float across the top smoothing things out. I wasn't able to figure out how to get that done, but I also wasn't going to go searching through the menu on the little touchpad dealio that was in there. <laughs> yes, that's a technical term because I didn't want to break so it. So anyway, the blade was a loss. I just used it to give me some stability for the most part. And so what I ended up doing was just putting several buckets in a specific area. And then I would use the flat part of that bucket and I would 
tamp it down a little bit and then at some point i would just swing the entire arm over an area and that seemed to work out pretty well i mean i i got that down pretty good i had no complaints with that like i said it just took longer than one might want to spend laying out a pad but it worked so i had my load of hard pan dump behind where i wanted the pad to be and it just happened to be as you saw earlier in the video that was a very soft spot in the yard and I had to take great care when I was taking buckets of hard pan to not actually dig so far down that I was getting the natural dirt because as I said earlier you don't want organics in your pad area So to compact this out, instead of putting, you know, 18 inches all at once and then trying to compact that, what I would do is just put one bucket and then that would give me, I don't know, three or four inches of material after I packed it down. And then I would just do that over and over again. I think I took about four or five passes like that. And then I would just start running the machine back and forth in order to get that compaction down. Because I didn't rent a plate compactor. I just figured I would just drive over it like this. Yep, five hours, ladies and gentlemen, of that. <laughs> it wasn't so bad. It was actually quite fun using this machine for the time that I had it. Now, one of the things that you might see, and I'm not sure if the camera can really pick up on this. I know I've got the camera at like a tilt. So if the ground looks tilty to you, it probably has more to do with the camera than it does anything else. But I didn't actually want this pad to be flat and i know that's not something that you're probably used to hearing because when you talk about installing pads you want them completely flat and then on the edges outside of the building probably about three to four feet outside of where the building is actually going to be you want the pad to slope down but in this instance what i wanted was more of a gradual slope from the front right to the back left and I wanted that to mirror the natural slope of the land now if I was going to pour a concrete pad to put my workshop on I would not have done that I would have made it completely flat but I'm not using that type of foundation I'm using a pier and beam foundation and so what I I don't want water if it gets up underneath my building to just sit there and this hard pan does not drain so if you get water trapped in there somewhere it's just going to sit and I wanted it to go in a natural way that water drains on this property. The highest point is the front right over where the fence post is. And then there is a five inch slope going from that point all the way to the back where the chickens are. And of course, five inches may sound like a lot of a slope, but actually, if you put a level down, that gives you about half of a bubble. And I did actually get out my grade stick on this because I wanted to make sure that that slope was there and it was right. And I didn't have any high points in the middle of this pad. That way water would flow directly to the middle underneath my building and then sit there. So I really wanted to make sure that there was a smooth slope to the back of the property. And I know right now you can probably see a lot of the tracks from the excavator in here, but this is fresh. So what's going to end up happening is that this is going to sit here for a few weeks and it's going to rain. And then it's going to dry out and then it's going to rain again. 
and it's going to dry out again. And over time, this is actually going to get extremely compacted. So it will pass any compaction test you want to come out and have done to this. You don't need a plate compactor, you just need time and mother nature basically. So I got the swale cut in over here. There were a lot of roots over in that area and I didn't want to completely dig everything up over there. I, I still want that fence intact and then there's also some saplings over there that's on the neighbor's yard and I don't know if they want them or not. So I didn't want to start ripping up roots that may happen to be part of something that they want and I end up killing it on my side. I was just trying to be a friendly neighbor. Now a little bit later what I in intend to do is come through here and cut off some of the surface roots that I know have died uh, but you can see it's actually rained the night before that I filmed this and you can see that water is sitting in that swale over there hey guys thanks for watching if this is your first time here don't forget to hit the subscribe button also tag the bell notifications so that you don't miss any new videos on this build series or any videos whatsoever that I happen to stick up because they're all extremely entertaining <laughs> until then.